Hello and welcome to our podcast on joy of teaching international student. I'm Dr. Nazrin Sultana, a teaching and learning consultant at Conestoga College, and I am the host of this podcast. In this podcast, we share our teaching journey and wisdom about teaching international students in the college classrooms. Today, my guest is Dan Georgescu, a full-time faculty at the School of Business at the college. And today, Dan will share his joy and learning from teaching international students at the college. Welcome, Dan. Thank you, Nasreen. It's a pleasure to be here. So, would you like to share something about your teaching background with us today? Sure. Um, I have been teaching part-time since 2009, and I've been teaching a lot of institutions in Ontario. Uh, I've been teaching for Sheridan College, for Humber College, for University of uh, York in the Schulich School of Business, mm -hmm. Wilfrid Laurier University in the Lazaridis School of Business. And um, so I finally decided to retire from my day job. I used to work at Ford for 26 years okay. in supplier development. And uh, I finally could embrace my passion, which is teaching. So I'm now a full-time faculty in the School of Business at Conestoga College. And I teach in the Supply Chain Management Global Program. I'm very happy that you chose, finally you chose your passion and you are here as a full-time faculty. And uh, then I know that you talked about a long teaching experience and they're wonderful. Uh, but do you remember the very first experience with teaching the national student? And do you remember any story, any aha moment, something that was surprising to you? Yes. Um, so teaching international students is a uh, extraordinary experience. Um, we are all used to the local students. And mm. through the years, we learn to deal with the local culture and uh, but the international students bring something new to the table. They, first of all, come from a diversity of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So you have to be on your toes about the cultural aspects of each of those backgrounds. And um, I want to share with you something that was really striking to me, but yeah. it didn't happen at the beginning of my career. It happened last semester. Okay, go ahead. So um, we finished the exam. It was the last class of the, of the term. Mm -hmm. And everybody left. And then a couple came back in, a boy and a girl. And they approached me and they said something like this. May we touch your feet and oh. take your blessing. Okay. And I was like, I wasn't familiar with the custom. So I said, I wonder if that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, I was extremely flattered. After the incident, I actually researched what it means. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I, it's a sign of respect and, yeah. and, and some sort of a familiar approach. Or um, mm -hmm. So I was very impressed by that. And, and it just happened. It was my best student in the mm -hmm. class. So I was very, very happy about that. That was the most striking experience I had with international students. And treasured one also, I believe. Uh, thank you for sharing that. That, def that definitely an emotional one. Um, I, would, I would like you to kind of take you back in the initial years of your teaching. And I wonder if there, were, there was any takeaways from those initial years, you know, kind of thinking, okay, you are a new faculty and you are kind of learning how to teach and how to teach these people of diversity. So any initial takeaway you remember now? Yes. Yeah, so one of the things uh, that was a challenge in dealing with international students was the fact that some of them don't have a good command of the of English. Okay. So they may know the subject, mm -hmm. but they may not know the words very well. So you have to be patient. Um, other things that I learned is that um, some of them, especially the introverts, need to be encouraged to speak up. My, okay. my classes are very interactive, so there is a lot of dialogue going on. So if I notice that some students don't participate, I try to take them aside and speak to them and find out why and encourage them. And um, that was uh, one of the most, uh, the biggest successes that I had, because by the end of the term, m almost everybody in the classroom wants to participate. So... It's, it's very good to see that. That is super. I mean, that is what is important, right? That how 
I, everyone is going through our journey and eventually they reached where you wanted them to be there. Um, you talked about one challenge about uh, communication level, but have you seen any other challenges while teaching international students? The international students need a lot of help and guidance. Uh, okay. My experience is that these are young people who don't have the benefit of family mm -hmm. close to them. They don't know who to ask for advice, not necessarily academic advice, mm -hmm. advice in general. And they come to me with all kinds of questions about personal life and health and finances. And um, so uh, as a professor of international students, I think we have a heightened responsibility. It's mm -hmm. not just to teach them the subject at hand, but also to teach them how to navigate the Canadian culture. culture. So one of the things that I do, for example, mm -hmm. um, every class we are doing attendance. We make sure that everybody's there. Yeah. So taking attendance is not a really interesting or exciting activity. So what I do is I ask my students to prepare their favorite Canadian something. For example. Okay. In the first class we do, who is your favorite Canadian singer? And that relates very well with the young people. And they, they, so uh, at the beginning they say, I don't know any Canadian singers. I said, why don't you research it? Just takes a little bit of time, see what Canadian singers there are. And they find out that Justin Bieber is a Canadian singer and they, they go <laughs> crazy. They, and, and Drake is a Canadian singer. And so they really, really like that. So the first class, I asked them, each one of them, to just name their favorite singer. The second class, we're moving to, what's your favorite Canadian scientist? So we got a little bit in more depth. They, they are not so excited about scientists, but then they find out that a Canadian invented insulin. So there are things that Canada did that are amazing. And then we go to favorite politician, favorite plastic artist. Mm -hmm. And that gives me an opportunity when, when we talk about things that are not so popular, it gives me an opportunity to promote Canadian values a little bit. Okay. For example, I talk about the group of seven and, and I tell them where they, when they can go to the museum and see it for free. So there will be no basically a burden, you know, financial burden to get into. Me. And, um, and I found that they love this because by the time we finished the term and we went through like 13 or 14, my Canadian something, they already developed a lot of knowledge about Canada. So when they have to have a social conversation or an interview, mm -hmm. they can relate to the person on the other side of the table and say, oh, you like the Leafs. We do sports. We, you like the Leafs. Yeah, I like the Leafs. You talked about, um, even you did not mention about social community, but you actually are trying to create the social community in the classroom. Uh, the way the icebreakers activities you have mentioned here. Um, I will uh, pull you back a little bit to the classroom context. So uh, in terms of uh, you talked about attendance. So did you have an issue with uh, late, uh, late coming to the class or constant absences? Uh, if yes, uh, is there any other trick or technique that you would like to share with us today? Absolutely. And I, I, by the way, thank you for asking me this. I'm very proud about what uh -oh. I did in this, in this uh, domain. So. Um, in my first class that I taught at Conestoga, mm -hmm. um, before the class, I sent emails. I told them what to prepare. I told them to be on time. I told them where the class is. I, I told them everything so there will, have no, there will be no problems. And um, about 50% showed up. And uh, okay. late, later, through the classroom, another, I don't know, 20% showed up. So I said to myself, this is not going to work very well because I teach difficult subjects like quality and statistics and regressions. And, <laughs> So if you're not in class, you're not going to, this is not, not something that you know from general knowledge. Yes. So um, I developed a system by which um, there is um, a mark component, a great component for in-class discussions. So okay. every class we have in-class discussion and every mm -hmm. single student has to answer multiple questions about the subject at hand. And um, they are very small. They are 2% each class. But if you add them up, they mm -hmm. are considerable. And um, if the student doesn't come to class or if the student is late, they okay. don't get those 2%. Okay. So they are very motivated now to come to class. And, um, you know, at the beginning of the semester, they come to class at the last moment. Mm -hmm. Towards 
session 12. They are there half an hour before okay. just to make sure that they get the right spot and they are with their group and in group activities, they will have the best position in the classroom. And so I believe that again, we do not teach the students we would love to teach. We teach the students which we have. Mm -hmm. And we have to adapt our techniques to be the best experience for the students that we have. We have to teach with intention intentionality. We have to teach with purpose. So this is a technique I, I developed for, for this. It also allows me to um, understand who the ones that are reserved about being extroverts are. So okay. I can help them with that. So you, I assume you developed the course, right? The course you're teaching? Yes. Okay. So because I'm asking this question because most of the people who probably are listening to us today, they probably have not developed the course shell by themselves. In that case, uh, just to uh, make sure that the people cannot add the marks as discussion just because they want. It should be already in built in the course shell or in the course design uh, just to ensure that. Um, I will go back to one of the points that you uh, mentioned about teaching with intention. And I am a big advocate of this particular you know, approach of teaching. Would you mind to share a little bit about uh, teaching with intention and purpose in the context of teaching international students? Absolutely. And, and one of the things that I um, love teaching is ethics. Okay. I have a passion for ethics. And I know this because these students, the international students come from diverse backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Um, their ethical values may be as diverse as their backgrounds. Mm -hmm. They are not necessarily universal and for sure they are not necessarily the Canadian ones. So one of the things that I do is I constantly explain the ethical aspects. Okay. Uh, one of the discipline I teach is purchasing. Purchasing has a lot of ethical implications. So mm -hmm. I make sure that we have lectures about ethics and how ethics works. Okay. That's one thing. The second thing that is very stitching with, teaching with intention in Canada, in order to be successful, you have to be able to work in teams. Okay. It, there is nobody who works by themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and also, in order to be promoted and, and be, um, go high on the hierarchical scale, you have to be able to make presentations, yeah. to be good at presentation. And, and we know, I know, that international students are not so good at presentation. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's not part of the curriculum from where they're coming from. Um, so one of the things that I do is I, uh, all the groups are working together to develop an assignment, but instead of asking for the assignment in writing and then providing a feedback to that particular person, I asked for the assignment to be presented in public in front okay. of the class. And the feedback is also public. So when I talk about one, with one group about what they did well and what they didn't do well, both from a technical academic perspective and from a presentation perspective, okay. like keeping contact with the class, um, not reading from some or not turning your back. Um, everybody benefits from that, that feedback. that feedback. So, and you can see lesson by lesson how they get better and better and better at it. Okay. So, so that's teaching with intention. Another thing that I do very briefly, uh, the first class I invite, uh, Conestoga has amazing, uh, services to support the international students. Yes. One of them is uh, career advising. Mm -hmm. So I invite the group career advising to come in, to send a person to talk about what the services that they offer are and how they can benefit the students. And then I tell the students, you have to make an appointment with the career advising to develop your CV or resume. Mm -hmm. And you have to make another one to, to try an interview technique and see how it works. And then one of the assignments that I give them is I want you to target 10 employers and send them your resume. Even if those people didn't publish a job, just to make sure that your resume is well written, and if you get an interview, you got an experience of being interviewed. Some of them never had an interview before. Yeah. So those are the intentions that I have. I try to give my students every possible means to be successful. Okay. That's beautiful, Dan. I have one last question for you. Mm -hmm. um, we have many new part-time faculty and many of them are very new to teaching and very new to teaching international students. So what will be your one tip? Uh, to those new folks who are very new to teaching international students? My, the most important thing that they can do is to establish a personal relation with the student. Okay. The students need to like them, to love them, to respect them. And in order to do that, you have to learn about the student's culture. Yeah. 
So I make a point in reading about different holidays and different uh, cultural events and, and congratulate the students when that happens. Um, I make sure that I know about um, culinary uh, regulations and who are vegetarians and who are not and, and stuff like that. But I just want to say the most important part for any faculty, new faculty, is the support that they get from their group. Mm. And I am extremely grateful for the support that I'm getting from my group. Okay. My coordinator, uh, Brian Snage, um, my chairs, uh, Kerry Rowe and Nicole Tate Hill, uh, my dean, Lil Premsuk, and our executive dean, Michelle Grimes, really helped me and my program to be successful. We are doing visits to assembly plants and okay. to... Um, aerospace companies. We are placing people in jobs and the satisfaction that you get out of that mm -hmm. far outweighs the satisfaction that you get from the spark of understanding that you get in the eyes of the students when they got linear regression. <laughs> Thank you so much. And you have shared so much of joy that, that we receive by teaching these international students and kind of helping them. Uh, to reach their goal for what they have come to this country. Dan, thank you so much for sharing your teaching journey with us. And I am wrapping up this session. And I hope that you continue sharing your joys with students and with teachers and with all of us. Thank you so much for uh, doing this podcast with me. Thanks for the opportunity, Dr. Sultana. It was a pleasure. <laughs>